Welcome to another action-packed episode of the Headbangers Ball. You might remember the very first time I hosted the Headbangers Ball, I wore a Motorhead shirt, and I'm not really exactly sure what that meant, but it meant that about a year and a half later that we would have Lemmy, not just as a guest, but the a co-host for the entire show. Is that good? Is it bad? You'll have to stick around and see. Also, for the next hour, we're going to see the world premiere of Motorhead's new video, No Voices in the Sky, and we've got videos from, I'm sure, Lemmy's favorite bands like Slaughter, Slayer, ACDC, Iron Maiden, and debuts from Metal Church, Cycle Sluts from Hell, Sacrifice, and Cat Man Do. Stung the butt. Sorry. <laughs> keep on going, keep on oh, going. Oh, no, no, it's your show. Right? Well, no, it's our show. You're the co-host, so. No, I know you're saying that to be nice. It's but see, this way, you can be obnoxious and do whatever you want, and... You know, I actually have to come back here. <laughs> you so. don't want to be saying that to me, man. So anyways, now anyway. you live in L.A. now, right? Yes, I do. And why the move to L.A.? Well, fun, isn't it? Because well, I know that. Because right? of the climate. I mean, anyway, I'm English, so it's more fun here for me. If you're American, I guess it'd be more fun to go and live in the Tower of London. I don't know. You know I think I got the better deal. Uh -huh. So you're happy, but the rest of the band isn't moving out here, right? Phil Taylor is. Mm -hmm. But um, we had a family tragedy, so I had to go back for a while. Okay. The, the other two, I think, will stay in. Yeah. We'll be back talking to Lemmy throughout the entire show. Yes, we will. But right now, do you want to intro this next video? I don't know what it is. Oh, yes, it's great white, isn't it? What's it say? Desert Moon. There you go, go on, go on, then. Sing that thing. That was Queensryche with Best I Can. Look for Queensryche on the road with Suicidal Tendencies. I'm Ricky Rackman. It's the Headbangers Ball, and of course, my co-host for the entire evening is Lemmy from Motorhead. No, no, no. Oh, We've no. only got a couple hours more to go. Uh, Relax. Uh, Anyways, you've got a new album out called 1916, which is a great record. And uh, yes, it is. It's you wonderful. haven't had a, a studio album since like 1987. 1918, yes. Uh, yeah. Well, we were in court all the time, you know, fighting our old management. And they get an injunction on us, so we one more time the music stopped, you know. So we just had to go out on the road, and then we couldn't even do that. So we were just sitting around waiting for it to get finished, and we won in court, so then we got back out. The yeah. court thing was with the management or something it like that? It was with the old record company, which is also the management. Because you are on a new record label now, right? Well, it's, yes. Yes, it is new now, isn't it? Yes, it's Japanese now. Epic, Sony. Sony Epic. And the album is called 1916. 1916. It's out everywhere. Okay, right we now, let's, doing that. let's take a look back into back memory lane. And uh, is there anything we're going to play the video Time for to Ace remember, of Spades? Remember, remember. Do you remember this video? <laughs> uh, kind of. I remember all five of them. I still don't know which one it is. Probably the worst one. That's usually what you get, you know. Well, let's take a look. Here is let's Motorhead with Ace of Spades. Ricky Rackman and Lemmy of Motorhead, welcome back to the Headbangers Ball. Yes, indeed. Welcome back to the Headbangers Ball, boys and girls. It's a jolly good show, as everyone knows. Thank you. And um, we were talking earlier. Now, Motorhead's been around since the mid-70s. Yes, when dinosaurs ruled the earth, yes. And I was also looking at some a list of your accomplishments. You've got quite a few accomplishments. I didn't know. should be a bit longer than that, really. <laughs> this is just, just page one. This is just page one. You were a roadie for Jimi Hendrix? I was. I didn't know that. What was that like? Uh, you well, said, let me go move my guitars. Or something it was like interesting. I mean, I can't tell you what it was really like because, you know, everybody knows that rock and roll stars take awful drugs and things, you know, so it's really, t I'm really ashamed of my time with Jimmy, you know, but it was really colorful, I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. now, it was great. I got to sit in a chair at the wings every night and watch him play, you know. Mm -hmm. and you think was, that at all Jimi Hendrix influenced you at all? 
influenced everybody. He turned the whole thing right around. It's like when the Beatles came out, they turned it all around as well, you know. One thing I want to talk about, um, like I said, the new album is called 1916. I, I listen to it all the time. The song Going to Brazil. That song, to me, I mean, it really sounds like it's got a lot of Chuck Berry sort of in it. Sure. It's, I mean, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a 12 bar. I mean, you play a 12 bar. It depends what you do with a 12 bar, see? The rest of the guys in the band, are oh, we down to do a 12 bar? So old fashioned. I said, rock and roll beat was 12 bars. Right. All of it. Old Chip Ray's numbers, all Little Richard, you know, all of them, all that stuff. So it's uh, just as valid today as it was yesterday, pop picking. <laughs> if you don't like it, screw you. Hey, you yeah. switching cameras on me, don't you? You think you confuse me that way? I don't care, you know. Don't worry, I, I don't care if you get my ear. I don't mind. I haven't figured it out yet either, don't worry about it. Anyways, um, sometimes on the show I've been saying that there aren't many really good, good tours anymore where they take a lot of bands, but coming this July, there's a show called uh, Operation Rock and Roll that's going to be playing in outdoor arenas, which has Motorhead, Judas Priest, Alice Cooper, Dangerous Toys, and Metal Church. So, I mean, that's... Gonna it's going to be... be fun stage manager, oh, that, isn't it? Oh, yeah. That, I mean, I'm excited for that show. But right now, we're going to play a video from Metal Church, which is the band that's going to be opening up that big tour. Their new album is called The Human Touch, and here is Date With Poverty from Metal Church. I haven't figured out Lemmy he is the co-host for tonight's Headbangers Ball. Making Excuse it, me, then I'm listening to George Shearing. Do you mind? Making it a very... I won't interrupt you. Making it a very special Headbangers Ball. Um, special Headbangers I ball? saw you in the movie Eat the Rich, the movie, and the you rich. said you've done some other movies. So do you plan to get back into acting? No. Other than, other than what we're doing right now? Dead boring it is. Standing around all day waiting to be told they don't need you. Get there at six in the morning, which is really going down well with me. You know what I mean about the fourth day in? going to a convent in Richmond, which is like 30 miles from where I lived, freezing cold, pissed off, sitting there doing nothing. Oh, it's all right, Lenny, we don't need you today, but they don't tell you till five in the evening. Not even a magazine on the table. It's, it's kind of like being on the Headbangers Ball, sort of. Yeah, but it doesn't have wonderful you uh, hosting it. Really. Exactly. Right now... Mind uh, you, I got paid for the film. <laughs> right now we're going to do this thing that we call the Ball Buster, and it's time <laughs> to... Uh, <laughs> Look at what happened in our last Ball Buster competition. After knocking off King of the Hill, Saigon Kick entered their second week at the ball, as the Ball Busters champion. Their song, What You Say, beat out Mr. Big's green-tinted 60s mind so with 78% of the vote. Tonight, Saigon Kick, which incidentally is my favorite new album, are up against Taiketo well, Forever Young. your favorite new album. You're one of my favorite new albums. I remember distinctly. One of my favorite ever... The people oh, that watch okay. the show know everybody's my favorite fan. All my favorite religion. albums. Just One of crazy. my favorite newer new albums. Uh, an album I like. Saigon Kick. <laughs> Are up against Psychedos Forever Young. That's one of my favorite new albums. I knew it was. And it's up to you to pick the winner. Watch both videos and call up and vote for your favorite. The number to call is 1-900-370-0100. Each call costs only 50 cents. Keep it twice the price. Exactly. Call twice, it's only a buck. Each, here's last week's winner. Here's Saigon Kick, what you need. Since you've been in a, uh, I don't know what the term I want to use is. What do you like to be called? Is it a hard rock band, a heavy metal band, or just rock and roll band? Sorry, I just lost my mind for a moment there. Uh, we're a rock and roll band. I mean, we... We was around before heavy metal anyway. Uh -huh. I mean, we, we had more in common with the punk thing than heavy metal, really. Now, j now since you've been around, uh, the first record, I guess, was around 1975. And um, what do you think about the music scene today? I mean, the hard rock scene. I mean, you guys have always been a heavier, louder rock and roll band than definitely anybody else I could think of at that time. Well, so it's reaching saturation point, isn't it? I mean, there's about 10,000 new bands come out every month now. And... Uh, Unfortunately, they're all very good, you know, like before it was easy. There's only one Eric Clapton. Mm -hmm. Then Hendrix would come and be a sensation. Now, you get all these bands and they'll do all the Eddie Van Halen riffs and all of that stuff, you know. They're all doing all the harmonics and everything. So you can't tell them apart. And the hair, haircuts don't help, you see. Right. Because then you have a hard what time finding is, if they're boys or girls. What we need is more Red Indian haircuts like me and like what me and Ricky have got, you know. It's, it's dirt, ladies and gentlemen. From the East End. Well, right now, here right is the now, band. It's on the, you want to intro this band? I'll intro this band if you Go like. Go ahead. Do it, Lennon. This is a band with whom I had the pleasure of touring a few years back. Slayer. Nice bunch of chaps. The music would lead you to believe differently. <laughs> Seasons in the Abyss. Good movie. <laughs> We're playing Iron Man, so that's good. We're playing Are You Ready from ACDC? Sepultura's Dead Embryonic Cells. And a debut from the Cycle Sluts, I Wish You Were a Beer.
great title. I wish they were all beers. And uh, not enough head on them though. <laughs> we were talking earlier about some of the uh, the other bands that you listed. Uh, you've listened to. Are there any bands, new bands that you think are out today that are going to be around for 15 years? I like Living Killer. I keep saying that in all these interviews. I, I really was um, impressed with Living Killer. More the first album than the second, but there again, it's always difficult to follow a good first one. I saw them at the Palladium a couple of months ago. They were real good. Who else? Well, I went up on stage at your place and did uh, Great Balls of Fire with Jet Ball. I thought they, they had an admirable attitude. Mm -hmm. All they wanted to do was sort of, you know, keep going until they lay down. Which exactly. Is absolutely perfect. I, I don't know, of course, when you ask me that question, the mind immediately closes down and you get the busy signal, you know, I don't know. I'll think of something to tell you um, in a moment when we'll you introduce still be this next interesting video from... The Bullet Boys, and what an interesting video it is. It, it, wow. I, I don't know when I've seen a more interesting one than... Well, we're going to sit on the edge of our seats just being I'm already interested. Doing, I'm already doing interested. that. I'm gonna the go, Bullet Boys, the THC I'm going to grovel on the floor when I sit. My God. On the stores, ladies and gentlemen, go out and buy it. Buy three copies. Exactly. Give them to your friends. I need the money. Your parents will love it. J just send me the money. <laughs> now, uh, did you go about doing this album any different than any of the other records? Did you say, hey, look, we're going to Oh, you haven't traveled 6,000 miles. Because you, you recorded this record where? Well, right here in sunny California. And, and did, did the sunny California miss how they come <laughs> out on the album? Well, you can hear the sunniness in it at you all can. times, you know. It feels very sunny. Yes, it, well, it sounds very drunk to me, some of it. But then I, it's because I know it is, you see. I mean, cheating there, boys and girls, you know. Naughty, really. Shouldn't say that on MTV, should I? Oh, and now that, oh, you, now that the, you will hit me. Now that the record is done, are you happy with the way it turned out? Yeah, well, it's the first album we ever did that we said it's finished. Mm -hmm. it, always before it was working at the clock, you know what I mean? Right. They said, I'm sorry, boys, that's all I'll have to do, you know. Now we said we couldn't do nothing better on it, so that's a much better feeling. Okay, we're going to come back and talk about some of the songs. Yes, we are. Head album. Can we come but back right now, but yeah, now, you can intro the right song. Right now, Ozzy, uh, Go ahead. Ozzy was born with Iron Man. And he is, some of the time. <laughs> <laughs> you like playing clubs or playing in front of... I, I don't really mind. I mean, play the same set anyway, you know. I mean, don't get no extra. <laughs> you, you, you don't notice a difference in the crowd, whether it's playing in front of 500 people well, or people always say, you know, in a club it's more intimate, you know, and all that, but I, I've never been able to do that and play guitar at the same time, so... Yeah. I, well, I, don't, I don't, don't think people go to see Motorhead and say, oh, let's go get intimate with Motorhead. Right, really, yeah, it's obvious Terry Como you want for that, isn't it? No, I think that um, I'd rather play, like, four or five thousand seat theaters. That's the ideal show for me, because mm -hmm. you get a good sound in there, because they're built for... Acoustics, you know, because right. in the in the arena, it's just Echo Valley, and if in the club you are too close to the stuff, you know. Wall well, shake. Four or five thousand seats there. Yeah, that's the one you want, boy. Yeah. Still on, you know. These cameras, they the lights on them don't work, you know, Rick. What's this? So they give you a second-hand one. It's the screw it up. <laughs> Still on the way is the number three skull crush of the week, but right now from Brazil, here is Sepultura with dead embryonic cells. Good luck. Carry it on MTV because this is the second shooting. I said the naughty word, boys and girls. I said the S word. <laughs> the one you go down the garden for. Well, I don't know what I can say. What can I say, Rick? I mean, what can you say about it? Well, you were a keynote speaker. <laughs> Teenage. You were one of those speaker guys, you know, on a panel yes, regarding right. censorship and I guess about how ridiculous it is and you've got your own strong opinion on the whole thing. Well, it is really, isn't it? I mean, if you're going to censor what people listen to, that's Nazi Germany eventually. They burned the books in Nazi Germany because they were written by people and expressed opinions that did not agree with the majority of the people. The majority of the people are a very unsafe set. The majority of the people voted Hitler in. <laughs> so I don't believe in censorship. I believe censorship has to be in your own mind. What you consider is decent is decent. If you're a decent individual, therefore it will be. If you're not and you'll get put in jail for it. How do you feel about them putting a sticker on your record saying... Oh, I really don't care. You'll probably sell another four million. They sold two million for two life crew. Why not? Uh -huh. You know, can't do me no harm. Right. And I ain't selling no albums before anyway, so... You know, I mean, um, Frankie goes to Hollywood, right? Bandit straight to number one. What can I say? So sometimes Go I... Go ahead, put two stickers on mine. So all it does is really bring attention to the fact Yeah, that... of course. I mean, and, and kids always want to do that. People don't realize that. They're putting stickers on there for the parents. I mean, the kid ain't going in there with his parents. 
you know, because that would look softy, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Be a sissy then. He goes in with all his gimpy mates, like, and, you know, throws a few bucks on the couch and gives that album. It's got a sticker on it, man. You know, and then they sneak off somewhere to the clubhouse and play it. You know, that's what happens. People don't seem to understand this. I don't know why. We've been feeding it to them for years. Well, good luck with your censorship. It won't work. You're never going to stop me. I am legend and I am legion. And there are thousands of us now, not just a few like it was when I started. <laughs> right. Too late. We've got your sons and daughters. While you're on a roll, why don't you enter the next video? Why not? Who's this then? The number two skull crusher of the week. Is that right? The number two skull crusher? My God, I remember when I was number three skull crusher. Got messy around the fingers, though. ACDC. They shouldn't be censored either. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. I've been ready for a long time. <laughs> It has to be dangerous, man. Also, it ain't rock and roll.